Let's pray that the Lord will speak to us very clearly. God's people I want to hear too. The Holy Spirit is gracious. He can speak to me too. I need to hear. Each and every one can hear if we are willing. And let's pray that God will give us ears to hear. I've got a message. I've been praying about that. But only the Spirit of the Living God can give the right words to this vessel. I'm just a container, God's people. He is the one who is the treasure. And the Word of God is the treasure. We're not looking for just information, but for transformation. We are told not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed. In the scripture we are told to be a sacrifice, living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. And I believe this word we are going to hear is going to stay with us. Let's pray about this as well, that the Lord will enable us to contain in our hearts whatever we hear. Very easy to hear and not, not to remember. Just forget. That the Spirit of the Living God will anoint the word soul. That it will be like a sword, it will be like a hammer, it will be like, like the fire too. Jeremiah speaks about the word of God in these three terms. Sword. He said, your word is a sword. It cuts. Let's pray that it will begin to cut each and every one wherever cutting is needed. It will be like a hammer and it will break to pieces whatever is hardened. There will be a fire that will burn everything that is not from the Lord. So Father, we look to you. We look to you, Lord Jesus. You are a good shepherd. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace with which you will speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When I was speaking last Sunday over and over again, are we willing to be a burnt offering? It has nothing to do with physical. It was spiritual. Spiritual offering. I need to bring myself to a place where I'm no more. And then, by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, I'll be able to say with Paul, the apostle, it's no more I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Praise God. I believe every believer can say this, if they're willing. Because the cost is very high. If I'm not living, I tell you I will be offending people. Christ is offense. To the Jews he is offense. And to the barbarian he is friend. He is offense. Is he? That's what the Bible says. Jews look sign and the Greek look wisdom. What we preach Christ the? Paul says when it came among you, I was determined that I won't preach anything but Christ and Him the crucified. Because next Sunday I'm going to preach Christ and Him the crucified. And this is now part 50, part 100. Christ the crucified. Cross, cross, cross and Christ. Oh, you say the only thing you preach is Christ. That is the only person that needs to be preached. You remember when he was speaking to the Jewish people? The scholars, maybe, they were questioning him. He said to them in John, you don't need to go there because you know the words by heart. He spoke to them and he said, you search the scripture because you think in them you have life, but just speak about me. Oh, does it mean all the 39 books? 
every book in the Old Testament. All the third, did he mean 39? Of course, he did not say these books are not speaking. He was speaking a whole the scripture. And he mentioned Psalm, he mentioned Torah, he mentioned prophets, God's people. Everything in the Old Testament is pointing towards Christ. If someone cannot see Christ in the Old Testament, he is not reading in the Spirit. He may be reading in Hebrew, he may be reading in Greek. It doesn't matter how much Hebrew, it doesn't matter how much Greek he knows. If he does not read in the Spirit, he will not find Christ in the Old Testament. Old Testament is the testimony of Christ Jesus. But that's not subject. I want to talk about growing in relationship. Christianity is relational. Christianity is not religion. But the irony is that Christianity has been made just a religion. Just like other religions. Sometimes you don't see any distinction between other religion and Christianity as a religion. Christianity as a religion, you can be saved and stuck and won't go anywhere. No impact. Things are just the same. Just like other people. God's people challenge to me today is, am I in relationship? How much have I grown in relationship? You asked me a question, do I need diligence not to be saved? But to grow, you got to be diligent. Do you listen to this? To grow in Christ, I need to be diligent. I can't be wishy-washy. You say, why did you say that? Wishy-washy Christian, half in the world, half in Christ, are totally worthless. I want to make a correction here. In the message I said it's written in Genesis. Do you know that? If you hear the message again, but it's written in Revelation chapter 3. I must correct, uh, please, next time you hear. Uh, we may talk how we can easily make a mistake. Writing to the church of Laodicea, Jesus said to the unbeliever. Was he speaking to the unbeliever? No, sir. He was speaking to the church. The letter was written to the church. What is church? The body of Christ. Is Christ spiritual? Yes. Is his body spiritual? Church is spiritual. Because church is the body of Christ. And he is living in the body. Was he on this earth? When he was on the earth, he was living in his body, wasn't he? As we are of that body now. And God's people, I want to tell you very clearly, this is what God's people need to understand. Salvation is free. It's not by diligence that you're saved. No, no, no. It's not by your effort that you're saved. Salvation is free. Growing in Christ is costly. You ask me how much will it cost you? Everything. You say, what about 50% to Christ? Not acceptable. What about 80%? Not acceptable. You say, why do you say this? I say this because this is what the scripture says. In his letter, he wrote to the Laodicean and he said, I wish you were cold. You are not cold. You are not hot. You are somewhere in between. Your value before me is like a value of a spittle. Oh, you see the scripture? Yes. Jesus said, I will spit you out of my my friend neutrality has got no place in Christ so growing in God is costly and it will cost you everything you see I don't have time to pay the price 
One day, I will be a loser. I will have to hear from him. I don't know you. I don't know you. Whatever you have done, you did it. We spoke about it, uh, spoke about it recently. Some Christian will be very famous in heaven. Famous for what? Do you remember that? Ash sheep. Ash sheep. They will have big ash sheep. You see, I've never heard about this. But now you've heard from the mouth of Angelo. I said it, he remembered it. Many Christians will be famous in heaven for the biggest ash sheep. Oh boy, have you heard the ash sheep of Sam? He was a pastor. And he did so many things. The other may say, I, I saw him carrying a big bundle. Oh, but when it was put to the fire, it was all burnt up. There was little gold, little silver, a little diamond that was left. Everything else was gone. And now Sam is very famous in heaven. For what? The <laughs> biggest ash sheep. Will ash sheep bless you? No. I can be famous, but I tell you, my friend, everything that Sam has done, Bible says, you can talk to me later, everything that Sam has done will end up in ashes. If I've done so many things, Everything done by Christ will stay. Everything done by me will not stay. So, you see, you're trying to tell us again that I need to be a burnt offering? Of course, I'm trying to say it again. I promise you something. I promise and we will not be able to finish that, I tell you. I promise that we will be talking about Psalm 24. I'm not forgotten. That psalm speaks about relationship. That psalm is written in advance. Christ is the one who comes in. You see, how do you say this? I say it, I say this because no creature can contain God. No, no. Not at all. God will never enter into Michael Angel, though he is great. No, sir. God will dwell only in human being. Why human being, you ask? Because only the human being are made in his. It is a matter of kind, my friend. And from the very beginning, we will talk about it one day, there was a council in heaven. Paul was given the revelation of that council. In the council, there was something decided. Something was purposed. Something was declared. What was declared? Man will one day be a vessel. Man will be the bride of Christ. He will be a vessel and through that vessel the whole creation. And how many of you know? I was hearing a man and he said that there are 750, if I'm not forgotten, but nobody knows exactly, galaxies. There are stars in galaxies. Our God is so great. His creation is so great. It's mind-boggling. All the creation need to know the majesty of God, the power of God. And there's only one vessel he is going to use and for all eternity, my tell, I tell you, my friend, this vessel, the bride, the overcomer, will be co-working with him. What will be our position? Vessel. He will fill this vessel. We will be the container. You will be nothing else. There was one who wanted to be like God. What was his name? It can't be like Christ. There's only one Christ. 
There is only one Christ, my friend. Don't, don't make this mistake of trying to, oh, I am going to be like Christ. You will never be like Christ. You will be a vessel. I will be a vessel. Only a vessel. I will be one with him when this vessel is filled with his life. Are you with me? Are you happy still? I will only be a vessel, God's people. Oh, I have always heard you try to be like Jesus. Yeah. Was Paul the apostle trying to be like Jesus? No. I am crucified with Christ. It is no more I that. Oh, I was thinking that I want to be like Christ. No, sir. I want to be a vessel. There's only one Christ. There's only one God. There can't be other God. There's only one Father, one Christ, one Holy Spirit. You cannot have another. One, there was one in heaven. Heaven was shaken because he wanted to be like God. He said it five times. I want to be like God. I want to be lifted up. Oh, my friend, this thing is going to rob many meaningful Christians to regret. I just want to be a container. I just want to be a vessel. And that is also, the scripture says, earthen vessel. And I'm not trying to be a silver vessel. I don't want to be a golden vessel. Earthen vessel is good enough for me. And Christ comes as a, a treasure. He is the treasure. He is everything. Everything bows to, to him. I tell you one thing. Another thing I want to remind you. If you find anything against what I'm trying to say, talk to me. We'll go through scripture. But God's people, there are some things. So, salvation is free. Growing in Christ is costly. And Psalm 24 explains how can you be connected. How can you be? You know, you know God is consuming fire? In Isaiah 33, I think it's verse 14. I'm being reminded about this verse. I want you to read it. Isaiah 33, verse 14. God's people, our God is a burning. Burning one. He is consuming fire. Can anyone live with the consuming fire? No, sir. The only way we can live with the consuming fire is Adam is removed. The life of Christ comes in and we only live the life of Christ. Not double life. Oh, oh, what? Did you say double life? Is it a good word when you say someone you're living a double life? No. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you're not happy, are you? <laughs> Please, just don't be so serious. When I say, you live a double life. What does it mean? You're not trustworthy. You're a hypocrite. How many Christians are living double life? Pardon? <laughs> Frankie says almost everyone. How do you find the courage to speak the truth? <laughs> that's, what, that's another question oh I've got Christ in me thank you sister you know she found the courage to say it oh God's people so what does it demand from us repentance are we willing yes sir <laughs> because eternity is at stake you say oh, you're speaking these things so clearly I wish every minister will begin to speak clearly or you will lose every member. That's all right. Jesus lost all the crowd once. This is what I have thought about it. I prayed about it. Listen to this. The sinner in Zion are afraid. Zion is the church. Again. It's the dwelling place of God. It is the dwelling place of Christ. Christ is looking for a dwelling place. And we have made it. Oh, I'm going to have a mention when he says it's a dwelling place. I'm going to the Father, I'm coming back, and I'm going to dwell in me. Not only me, in chapter 14 of John, verse 17, he said all Trinity is going to come and live with you. Did Jesus say that? 
Of course he did. You seem to be very serious today. Uh, I think you can smile. It's, it will do you good. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrite. Hypocrite are the people who live double life. I cannot manage to please God by living double life. What does double life mean? My life and the life of Christ too. His life comes in my spirit by as a seed. What is, where is it written? 1 Peter 1.23 Incorruptible seed. Christ's life comes in. The tragedy is most of the Christians have got that seed in seed form. That's it. That's why the world is not even looking to the church. That's why young people are disillusioned with the church. That's why they would like to go somewhere where there's too much noise and wrong teaching. The sinners and giants are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrite. Who? That's the question I was asking my friend. We'll carry on this subject. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Burning fire. Who? Adam can't live there. Adam has got no chance to be. Adam has to go. That's why Jesus came to remove Adam. When Adam is removed, there's a space for his life. His life. His life, my friend. That life has never been in human being until Jesus died. Paid the price. Devil could not understand that when he will die, he will become seed in millions of people. His death, when Jesus rose again, and the seed can be sown in a in human being, that was the nightmare of the devil. He did not know what to say, how to handle this. Now we are all his nightmare, because Christ is living in you. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? Only who are not living, but Christ is living in them. Is Christ, my friend, God accepts. If Christ is a seed, then the harvest will be also him. Is he looking for harvest? Yes. Last Sunday I said something that one, suppose there's a one million church, big church, mega church, and nobody is mature. He's not looking for that. He's looking for harvest. What does harvest mean? Mature seed. Mature plant. So God's people will carry on this. I've not even touched 24 Psalm, but please read it. That Psalm talks about relationship. Who can have relationship? Someone talked about this. Who will ascend? And we will, we will explain it next Sunday. Who will ascend? And uh, someone said, ascend mean smoke rising up. We'll talk about that next Sunday. Smoke rising up. What does it mean? I become burnt offering. Spiritually speaking, then Christ will be seen. I will be out of sight. As long as I am in sight, people see me, they will not be saved. My life will affect no one. It's the life of Christ, God's people. And I tell you, it's a great joy to have the life of Christ. You say, have you got it? No. Is it a destination? Yes. If I don't display the life of Christ, shall I condemn myself? No, sir. What shall I do? Repent. See it as a challenge. If I'm displaying my life, I, I'm provoked. If I can be provoked, God's people, then the life of Christ is not option. Because love is not provoked. What is Christ? Love. Love 
I am provoked. That means my life is functional. The life of Christ is not functional. God's people, it was the shortest sermon that I have preached. And I preached to myself too. We are not going to live a double life. That will be a journey. That will not be tomorrow. No, no. It will be a journey, my friend. So cheer up. Don't you worry. Don't you be anxious. It is a journey and the Holy Spirit is here. And he will handle all right. That means you are taking a mammoth task. The task that Rebecca took. She was a symbol or I would say figure of the bride of Christ. What did she do? I will give you water, Eliezer, and I will give water to your ten camp camel, and I will draw for them how many gallons, my friend? About 500 gallons. They say when the, when the camel has crossed that desert, he can drink in one go 50 gil, gallons of water. She was powerful. She was a warrior bride. Isaac, of course, is the figure of Christ. You know that? And Holy Spirit is the figure of Eliezer. It's very simple because it's all speaking about Christ and his ways. So God's people, are we being prepared to be a bride? Bride will be a warrior bride. Warrior bride will be like, like, like the master. Like the master, but what, what, what do I mean? He will be seen in them. He will come. Psalm 24, speak about his coming. I'll give you a hint, think about it, so that when you come, you'll understand. In Psalm 24, there are three things we will think about. First, it is the claim of God. Earth is mine. It's claim of God. Then the next is the call of God. Are you willing to be with me? Are you willing to be one with me? Are you willing to be rightly related to me? Are you willing to say goodbye to everything that comes between the relationship? Are you willing to pay the price? And then, if I'm willing to pay the price, he will come in. We will think about it. Why? Why would he come? A very definite thing that we will see. But that's for next Sunday. Let's stand up in the presence of the living God. We are not worried. We are not anxious. You say you have given us a tall order. Well, the reward is very tall. The reward is eternity, forever and ever. God will not tolerate another Lucifer with the my, me, and ego in him. There will be no Lucifer around the throne anymore. My self must go. That's why Jesus said very clearly, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Well, why you can't be my disciple and disciple me learner? That simply means you won't be able to learn a thing if the self is still on the throne. God's people, we praise God for the Holy Spirit. We praise God for this great teacher. We praise God who is always there to prepare us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, rejoice God's people. We have been chosen. Chosen to be one with Him. Hallelujah. Chosen to glorify Him. Hallelujah. Chosen to let the world see who Christ is. His life in me. Praise God. Lift up your voices to the Lord and thank God for this life of God's people. Thank God for this life of Christ. Thank God for this life of Christ. Let's Lift up our hand to the Lord and pray together. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for paying the price. Thank you for dying my death. Thank you for dying as me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the life that has come to live in me. Your life. Lord, the time is coming when your people may be the remnant 
will not be living double life, but your life alone. I want to live your life, Lord. This is my desire. This is my destination. I will not be deterred. I will not be distracted. I will focus on the Lord. And I will be more than conqueror through Jesus Christ, my Lord. In his name. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord.